channel welcome back to another video I'm Jesse E this is Ravenclaw and you're watching you have no idea how excited I am to be filming this video so many of you hit me up and asked for recommendations for what to read during Blackathon which is now the entire month of February and I could not be more excited. And these recommendations come from all genres. We have thrillers, fantasy, nonfiction, fictional short stories. There's a romance in there and of course my all-time favorite medium, comics. So stick around because no matter what you're into, I have a feeling that there's going to be a book for you in this video. Before hopping in on the recommendations, I'm gonna give a refresher for the reading challenges that go with Blackathon. Hear Us challenges you to pick any book of any genre by a black or African author. Feel the Love challenges you to read any book featuring a romance between a black person and another person of color or between two black people. Wakanda Forever challenges you to pick a graphic novel starring a black or African main character. And then we have More Than a Color which challenges you to read a book with a main character who is black and intersectional. This means they can be black and queer, black and disabled, black and neuro atypical etc. I have the recommendations divided by genre and the first genre I'm gonna give you is thrillers. I don't know about you but I love creepy books and I adore feeling scared. It takes a lot to freak me out but these books definitely come close. This first book was one of my favorites of 2018 and it is by my favorite author Victor Laval and it is none other than The Ballad of Black Tom. So this is actually a retelling of an HP Lovecraft story. I think it was called The Horror at Red Hook. It's a very, very well-known story that I still haven't read. And honestly, I don't feel the need to after reading this book. Like this gives me everything that I need. Some of you might know that our beloved HP Lovecraft was a notorious racist. And I find it very amusing. The irony is not lost upon me of Victor Laval taking a white character from HP Lovecraft and making him black. <laughs> we basically follow Black Tom, who is a swindler musician living in the 1930s. Tommy is approached on the street one day by a very curious and mysterious figure who offers him $500 if he would play music at his mansion. And at first, Tom is like, Crazy ass white boy. He eventually accepts the offer and finds that the house is full of horrors. This is definitely heavy in the paranormal aspects, but there's a lot to dissect from this book. One of the things I found revolutionary about this book was that Tom's father is very affectionate and frequently tells him about his worth and how much he loves him. And I I think that that is very absent with men. I think that men aren't often raised with a figure who is willing to hug and kiss them and tell them that they love them, especially within black culture where uh, black men are frequently raised not to have a desire for human affection from their parents. This is also a very quick read. It's a novella about 145 pages. You will blow through it, but I promise it will not leave you wanting in terms of substance. So this beautiful book will meet the challenge of Hear Us, any work by a black author. The next thriller is a recent release that also packs a powerful punch, and that is none other than My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyen Khan Braithwaite. In this short book, we follow two sisters, Korede, who is the older sister and the protagonist, and her younger sister, Ayula, who is beautiful beyond measure. Korede is on the path to becoming head nurse at a prestigious hospital in Lagos, Nigeria, but she has one major problem. Her sister has a terrible habit of murdering her boyfriends and leaves Korede to clean up the mess. When she's not scrubbing blood off of the floor, she is pining after one of the doctors in the hospital, a man who doesn't see her or realize how deeply in love with him Karede is. This book was so complex and layered. I loved how heavily steeped it was in Nigerian culture and elements, but you were still able to follow along as somebody who wasn't Nigerian. Great depiction of what it's like to be an enabler and what it's like to be enabled. Commentary on feminism, the way we treat young women in society, and the way that we consume female youth and beauty. I also found myself laughing out loud while reading this book. It just, it's a fantastic time. This book meets the challenges of Hear Us and More Than a Color. Next, we have two fictional short story anthologies. The first one is How to Love a Jamaican by Alexia Arthurs. The very second that this book hit the shelves last summer, I was there. 
Alexia Arthurs is a Jamaican American herself and this book features short stories of what it's like to be Jamaican and what it's like to be a Jamaican American. And all these short stories are from Alexia Arthurs herself. They feature main characters that are queer, that are elderly. There are so many beautiful, vast topics that this book covers and the prose was just stunning and excellent. Plus, how can you argue with this beautiful cover? I was really disappointed that this book wasn't discussed more or at all on booktube. I personally hadn't heard of anybody talking about this book last year and it deserves a thousand times more love than it's been given. This book actually meets three challenges. Feel the love because it has romances between black people and people of color. Um, hear us because it's by a black author. And more than a color because some of the characters in the short stories are intersectional. And those of you who follow me on Instagram and watch my stories where I live update you on my thoughts on books as I read them already know what this next book is going to be. Black Enough edited by Evie Zaboy. Black Enough was one of my most highly anticipated releases of 2019 and this is another book that did not let me down. Fictional short stories, all a collection written by black young voices in America, tell the tales of what it's like to be black and young in America. As you can see, I annotated the shit out of this book. This is the book that I needed when I was 16 or 12 or even 18. I needed this book so badly. This book is extra special in terms of Blackathon because it meets every single challenge except for Wakanda Forever, which is to read a graphic novel. But it meets all of the other challenges. So if you're looking for a one fits all book, this is definitely it for you. This is the first ever anthology of stories about what it's like to be young and black in America that does not focus on racial trauma and black people getting shot and killed. This is the first time I have ever picked up a book that talked about black identity and where I got to see black kids just living their lives, having fun, going on adventures, falling in love, having sex for the first time, trying to get into their college of choice, surviving the suicide of a loved one. And while it is absolutely critical that we be discussing in society the negative effects police brutality and racism have on black youth, we also need to be talking about black joy, black coming of age. And in my opinion, this is the first ever anthology that has successfully made black kids relatable to other kids. And more importantly, black children deserve to read stories about themselves where they don't die at the end. If you're looking for short stories that feature a lot of flowery prose and complex sentence structure, you're not gonna find that in this book. Which at first I didn't understand because so many of these authors are known for their kind of heavy prose. It wasn't until I reached the halfway point in the book that I realized that each of these authors wrote their stories very simply for a reason. And that reason was because they wanted something light. They wanted something that was easy to understand and dissect. Black kids receive way too many heavy messages about them as it is. And I think it was really important to these authors that they put out some short stories that were just light, carefree, and enjoyable, although they do still touch on some really heavy topics. One of my favorite short stories in this book is about two gay boys. Um, it's basically a Romeo and Juliet retelling with an interracial gay romance, and it was incredible. I also loved how steamy that story was because so often when young adult writers write about queerness, they are so hesitant to talk about all of the hormones and sexual desire that goes into being a young queer kid. But we have no problem doing that for young straight kids. So I really appreciated that, and I can't wait to talk about this in my wrap-up. As you can tell, I have a lot to say about it. Next book that we have is for our lovers of nonfiction, and that book is Death of Innocence by Mammy Till Mobley. I read this book many, many years ago, and it has stuck with me. It has haunted me ever since. We all know who Emmett Till is, and if you don't know, you need to Google his name immediately. Emmett Till was a 14-year-old black boy who was accused of whistling at a white woman in a store. As a result, two adult white men kidnapped him from his home, tortured him for hours, and then beat him to death. His courageous mother, Mammy Till Mobley, wanted people to see what had happened to her baby boy. And so she did something that no black woman had ever done before. She dared to have an open casket, showcasing the horrendous trauma that had been inflicted upon Emmett Till's body. While I don't recommend looking at the photos, I will say that they haunt me to this day and I will never ever forget them. And I also should add that his killers were not convicted of any crime. In her book, she tells the story of who Emmett Till was when he was alive, and she also sheds some new light upon the horror of his death. 
It was one of the most impactful, important books that I have ever, ever, ever read. And I really encourage you to do the same. And just a couple years ago, I can't remember her name and it's honestly not important to me, but the white woman who had accused Emmett Till of whistling at her way back in the 1950s finally revealed in her old, old age that that was a lie. Since she was like 76 or 80 years old, so many people were saying things such as, oh, well, she's too old to go to jail. Well, Emmett Till was too young to be murdered. I'm sorry that your grandma's gotta go to jail, but she's racist, she gotta go. More importantly, Emmett was an amazing kid and it was so beautiful to read about who he was from his mother's perspective. Also important to say that Mammy Till Mobley has passed away as well and now is at rest with her son. The next book we have is one I finished yesterday, another one of my highly, highly anticipated releases, Once Ghosted, Twice Shy by Alyssa Cole. Part of the Reluctant Royal series, this novella is able to stand on its own, meaning you don't have to have read the Reluctant Royal series in order to understand what's going on. That being said, after finishing this novella, I definitely want to read the Reluctant Royal series. It follows two young black women, Likotsi and Fab. Likotsi was devastated when Fab sent a text ending their relationship over seven months ago, and she hasn't recovered from it since. Likotsi senses the opportunity for closure when she runs into Fab on a subway train almost a year later. She confronts Fab only to find that they both still have feelings for one another and that their relationship is far from over. So maybe this is my own prejudice with romance novels, but I was not expecting such beautiful writing from this book. I actually listened to it on audiobook and that blew my mind. Words that Alyssa Cole uses just paints excellent images in my mind that I couldn't look away from. And it was a good thing too because they were some steamy, sexy images. I was surprised at how well developed and relatable the characters were and how the book lightly touched on some real world issues. The cool thing about this romance is that it meets all of the challenge. It meets hear us, feel the love, and more than a color. One more book to talk about before I move on to comics and that is The Bells by John L. Clayton. I recently finished The Bells and I know that this is a very polarizing book. Many people did not like it, but I have to say I adored this text. Not only is this one of the most beautiful elaborate covers I've ever seen in my damn life, the world building in this book was just spectacular. John L. Clayton went to extreme lengths to make us feel as if we were transported into the life of the Bells. In 16-year-old Camellia's world, people are born gray with blood red eyes and straw colored hair. And the only way to become beautiful is with the power of a bell. Camellia was born as a bell. She and her sisters have been trained since day one in how to hone their craft and to use their magic for good. The greatest honor a bell can achieve is to become the favorite, which is the bell that gets to live in the palace of the king and queen and to serve their royal subjects. If you don't make it as the favorite, you are scattered throughout the kingdom and go to the lesser islands where you take beauty appointments. People can pick their eye color, skin color, hair texture, height, even their waistline. Bells even have the ability to change a person's temperament, to make them nicer or more confident. This book was enjoyably well paced and I was living for the vivid descriptions of food and color. This book is everything that I loved about the Luke series and Girls of Paper and Fire. It takes a dark, dark, dark turn and I feel like it's just contrasted by all of the lightness and fluff and beauty of the story. That being said, I would like to warn you that there is a brief scene of sexual assault. Now the only Blackathon challenge that this book meets is the Hear Us challenge, but I encourage you to read it anyway. My favorite part of this video, we get to talk about comics. The good thing about these comics is that many of them meet pretty much all of the challenges. The first one that I have, one that does meet every single challenge, is The Wicked and the Divine. I've been collecting this comic for years. It is one of the most beautifully written comics on the market right now, and the story is fantastic. Every 90 years, the ancient gods and goddesses are reborn as whatever is popular and powerful at the time. They get to spend two blissful years on earth, being worshiped and loved by all, and then their lives end again. In the last century, they were psychic mediums, and in this century, they are what we currently worship the most. 
none other than pop stars. This comic book starts out with a main character who is half black, half white, and she is human and wants desperately, desperately to be one of the gods. It is a very gay, very exciting, one of the most diverse comics I've ever read, and did I mention that it's absolutely beautiful. And next, we have one of my favorite comics of all time, Superb, published by Lion Forge Catalyst Prime, written by David F. Walker, who is one of the best comic writers of our age. I don't care if you don't agree, he is. He's amazing and underrated. Kayla and Jonah are best friends. Kayla is the rule follower and Jonah is the rebel. In their role, the kids who are born with mutant abilities are seen as a threat and are subsequently eradicated from society. The mutant ability doesn't manifest until someone is about the high school age, which is why there are little detectors sent at the entrance of the school. And as each kid passes through, the detector will tell the kid if they have transformed or not. Kids who are transformed are removed from the school, never to be seen again. Kayla supports this practice. She comes from a very uptight family and she believes in nothing more than law and order. So you can imagine her surprise when she finds out that her best friend Jonah has been fighting crime behind her back. The comic is further complicated when Kayla finds that she herself has powers. Even if you're not a big fan of action or superhero comics, I think you'll still enjoy this because it has some really beautiful spreads and the art is very, very clear. It's easy to follow along in this comic, but it's still a very enjoyable read and it's not simple by any means. This comic meets the challenges of Wakanda Forever and Hear Us. Next, we have my favorite kids comic, none other than Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Lunella Lafayette is a nine-year-old super genius. At just nine years old, she becomes the most intelligent person in the Marvel Universe, having an IQ that surpasses that of Tony Stark and Bruce Banner. This comic features cameos from many beloved superheroes and it meets the challenge of Wakanda Forever and also More Than a Color. Next comic is my all-time favorite and that is The Destroyer by Victor Laval. When her 12-year-old son is shot and killed by police, Josephine will stop at nothing to bring him back to life. They are the last descendants of the line of Frankenstein and Josephine is a brilliant scientist who has the technology and the smarts to be able to reinstate life to her son. This is a modern Frankenstein retelling with black main characters and it is just phenomenal. If you are a science geek, you are going to fall just as in love with Josephine as I have. And her son is the sweetest character ever. The two of them are being tracked down by another monster. I won't say who because I don't want to spoil anything, but this, this comic is action packed. It's beautifully written and it has fantastic themes. This comic is not heavy by any means. There's so much to enjoy about it, but I do love the political undertones. Destroy it meets the more than a color challenge, the hear us challenge, and of course the Wakanda forever challenge. Next we have a thriller comic that is Infidel by by Pornsac Pichote. I read this in October and it blew my freaking mind. It is amazing. But this comic is one of the creepiest, if not the creepiest I've ever read, so tread lightfully. Our main character is Aisha. Aisha is a devout Muslim married to a white man. They have a child together and through a long series of unfortunate events, they move into a building that is very, very much haunted. Aisha's best friend is Medina, who is a black Muslim woman. It turns out that the apartment building that they live in is haunted by racist and xenophobic entities that do not want them there. And it's not just Aisha and Medina experiencing the haunting. Many of the other residents of color, mainly Aisha and Medina's friends, are being haunted as well. So we get to jump perspectives quite a bit. The writing is fantastic. There are some creepy ass beautiful spreads. I love how haunting the imagery is and the penciling is just off the chain. It's an amazing comic and definitely worth reading. We have queer characters, Muslim characters, black characters. There's also a mystery in this story and I know that this comic is being adapted on screen. I cannot wait for that to happen. It's phenomenal, but you need to read it first. This next comic is one that I found on my shelves. I purchased it and then I just completely forgot about it. So I haven't read it, but I do want to share it with you guys. And that is none other than Kick-Ass by Mark Miller. The mantle has been taken up by a black woman who is an ex-soldier. I did start reading this and I very much enjoyed it. So if you are a fan of action comics, definitely check this one out. Next, we have Motor Crush, illustrated by Babs Tarr, written by Brendan Fletcher. I am in love with this comic. I have gushed about it on Twitter. It basically tells the story of 23-year-old Domino. During the day, she competes in the prestigious World Grand Prix, and at night, she races illegally for a street drug called Crush. 
it is an accelerant used to make your motorcycle faster. She is using this accelerant in her inhaler. Domino is a character who has asthma and you find out pretty early on in the comic that when she is using her inhaler, it is actually her consuming this accelerant. This accelerant would kill any normal person. In fact, we see somebody die from using it very early on in the comic. It's very clear that Domino isn't human, but we don't know exactly what she is. This comic book has so many layers to it. She is adopted and trying to find out where she has come from. These abilities that we can't explain and an on again, off again girlfriend named Lola who is thebomb.com. It's a fantastic comic, it's really funny. Domino is so badass and her fashion is amazing. That comic meets all of the challenges except for Hear Us. The last comic I have is fluffy and lighthearted and it is called Twisted Romance. We follow a young plus size woman who works at a modeling agency and she falls in love with one of her clients a client that is tall, skinny, and adored by all. It's fantastic and you should definitely read it. This one also meets all of the challenges except for Hear Us. That is gonna do it for this video. I really hope that your next beloved favorite book is on this list. Just, I never prioritize reading books with characters who look like me and I think my enjoyment of books is suffering as a result of that. And for the first time in a very long time, I feel energized to read. I feel excited. Blackathon means things to me that I can't even explain and I'm so excited to be sharing it with so many of you. I hope that y'all are just as excited as me, Francina, and Lauren are for Blackathon. Stay sharp and I will see you in my next video. Thank you.